are good. Okay, so art in general is a good therapy. Um, helps you escape from reality. It's a nice hobby. Keep, keeps you creative. And um, it's a good way to release your stress. So one of the early things I learned about art is um, when I was visiting the, the ROM, one of the artists created a mural out of bottle caps. And he was talking about his process and why he chose uh, to pick bottle caps as uh, a medium for creating art. And the reason why was that it was free. So I guess a lot of people drank around his town or something, so there was a lot of bottle caps everywhere. So the whole process of doing art with something that's free or something that's cheap is that it allows you to be um, free. So you're not inhibited by, oh, this is gonna cost so much or um, you're scared to do something because you don't wanna be wasteful, stuff like that. So it's, I, I found that very important. So a lot of my art is actually created from stuff uh, I found at the dollar store or Home Depot or these kind of Walmart or these kind of big box uh, chain store so that you know it's easily accessible and I'm not afraid of um, being experimental because I can just throw it away it doesn't really matter so I found that as a very important thing uh, with creating art um, the other thing is you see a lot of Instagram pictures of artists that kind of stand there with a big mural and a paintbrush and they look like they're painting live well that's not really true <laughs> <laughs> Because if you go to the AGO and you look at some of these artists, like the famous artists, and they'll show the process of um, the way they create art. And back in the day, if you're going back many centuries, uh, paper was scarce. So you'll see that they sketch on top of sketches. So do a sketch and then because they don't have paper, they'll just sketch right on top of the other sketch or they'll sketch on both sides of the paper or they'll sketch on newspapers. Um, sculptures will make little tiny models before they actually make the whole thing. A lot, of art, a lot of artists have like um, several kind of prototypes before they actually do their piece. So don't be afraid, or don't, a lot of people go into art thinking, they get very frustrated and they say, oh, I can't do it, I can't do it, or they try something and then they try to draw a pan and it doesn't look, doesn't look right and they get frustrated. Well, the question is, well, how many times did you draw that panda? Like how many attempts, how many prototypes did you try to draw that panda? And even if that panda didn't work out, there's such a thing as abstract art. So just put it aside and then rethink it and then you can bring it back and just turn that panda into something abstract. So because art is just um, to every individual's taste and chances are that if you look at your own piece and you say, oh, okay, you know what, this is no good, blah, 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 I don't like it, so on and so forth, chances are you're the one that's wrong. <laughs> because I found out that a lot of stuff that I make and I think that, oh, this is like horrible. And for some reason, I'll get like a like on Instagram or, you know, a heart on like whatever, Redbubble or places that I try to sell it. And the, the people actually like it. And I think it's like, what, why? Anyway, so that's another, another cool thing to keep in mind. Um, oh yeah, time. So creating art, because everybody goes to work, or goes to school, we live a very busy life. Um, finding the time to do art, you kind of have to look at it as something that I haven't been able to learn, but every, everything you do, like every little thing you do, you should consider it an accomplishment. And that's something I haven't been able to do. I get very frustrated easily, but as long as you keep that in mind, then you can do like baby steps. So you can, um, like Monday, if you just put out the paint brushes or put out the paper or put out the pencil, whatever medium it is, just call it a day. Like that's it. So the next day, if you want to sketch something, sketch it and then just call it a day. Just do like very, very little things. As long as you're moving forward, it'll be done before you know it. And if it doesn't work out, don't necessarily throw it away, just put it aside and come back to it. Or like even years later, you might look at it and go, oh, I have another idea of doing something. Um, but the main thing is to experiment. Uh, the more you experiment, the more you learn. Um, nothing's a mistake, so don't, don't feel like, oh, it doesn't work and you think it's a mistake. It's not, a lot of stuff comes back to you like months later and you realize that, oh, 
this is what I tried and now I've developed a new method of doing this and it, it works out. So anyways, I created a list of um, places to visit in Toronto. Uh, I know that COVID's here, so the hours and stuff may be different, but um, there's two places, two AGO, of course, which is a great deal right now. They, they're offering $35 as an annual fee. And then MOCA is a more of a modern uh, contemporary art museum, and it's $50 for an annual fee. But AGO is by far the, the best deal of all, for $35 uh, a year. And then I put a list of all the free ones. So there's a lot of private galleries all over Toronto. They're all free. Um, the hours would differ now because of the whole COVID thing, but um, it's cool to visit because each gallery kind of caters to their own little niche. So some may be photography, some may be multimedia, some may be interactive. Um, I've been to ones where, you know, there's like, you can wear a VR thing and see cool images and then um, some have videos playing and so on and so forth. And then the next thing is I have a list of art events. So a lot of these art events have actually moved online. There's like the Queen Street Art Crawl, I think the Toronto Art Crawl. These have passed or maybe coming up. I think Queen Street Art Crawl might be coming up because they've actually moved online before you could actually go walk around and they'll have stalls and all that stuff to check out. It's a cool kind of day out. So that's, uh, that's something to check out. And then the last thing is um, because we're in a very digital era, so creating art, so even if you draw something, you can easily archive it by taking a photo of it and putting it into the cloud or store it on hard drive. So a lot of people use um, Photoshop and Lightroom for, Photoshop for drawing and Lightroom for um, photo editing. But these software cost money and it's actually gotten worse because now they want a monthly fee. So I've put some alternative softwares that are actually free and do the pretty well the same thing. Mm -hmm. So yeah, you're welcome to take the list or mm -hmm. if you want me to email you, you can write your name and email and I can email it to you. Perfect. Yeah. And sorry, this is my art. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so um, especially sculptures, have a look. It's all for sale. And <laughs> did you make Did you make these yourself? Like, yes. Uh, yeah. Was, the yeah. So I make the sculptures, mm -hmm. and this is the actual physical piece. And then I also took the sculpture and I photographed it, uh, black and white, on different angles. And then you can buy a print of it oh, in case awesome. you don't want the actual mm -hmm. physical. Where did you make it? Uh, dollar store. Oh. <laughs> These are dollar store stuff. So it's um, paper. Dollar store and Home Depot stuff. So it's made out of paper. Mm -hmm. Uh, plaster, wood, stuff like that. Oh, cool. Yeah, so that so way cool. you can... Oh, does it work? Oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The needle work is beautiful. Yeah, it's so nice. So yeah, have a look, and then there's a book of more images um, mm -hmm. of other stuff that I've done. Thank you. Cool. So, thank, thank you so much. Thank you.